Employing the character of Heber as his mouthpiece, Dr. Zidane negatively describes St. Cyril and demeans the theological school of Alexandria. On page 258, Heber says, I met with Bishop Cyril only once. On that day, I had been in Alexandria for two years, overfilled with boredom, during which time I was resigned to the will of the Lord, forgetting the dream of becoming brilliant in medicine. I spent my time there praying with the monks and attending the liturgy most of the days, napping throughout the majority of liturgies and regularly attending classes in the theological seminary to learn again what was studied by those working with herbs, druggists and agriculturists in my first countries. I remained in this way, my will and spirit despoiled, and I realized that my dreams that attached me to Alexandria turned into a nightmare perched on my soul and inevitable. On page 249, Heeper says, The words of Cyril with me were sharp. Having mentioned all that was spoken between them, Heeper comments, Nestorius heard me with attention and concern, so I felt that he realized from the meanings behind my story what is deeper than shown by the apparent speech. On pages 253 and 254, Heeper speaks about Saint Cyril saying, By taking the name Heeper, will it hide me from the sight of the Church of Saint Mark and the Lion's Claw, that is Saint Cyril? Also on page 247, Heeper says, We have to, in order to avoid the teeth and claws of the Lion of Saint Mark. Excerpts from the Commentary of Saint Cyril on the Gospel of Saint Luke, Homily 29. The compassionate man must necessarily also be ready to forgive, so as to show friendly acts even to his enemies. Great is the glory of compassion, and so verily it is written that man is a great thing, and the merciful man an honorable thing. Proverbs 26. For virtue restores us to the form of God, and imprints on our souls certain characters, as it were, of the supreme nature. And yet it were rather our duty to have compassion on the infirm, as those who have been overcome by assaults of the passions, and entangled without hope of escape in the meshes of sin, and to pray in their behalf, and exhort them, and rouse them up unto soberness, and endeavor ourselves not to fall into similar faults. For he that judgeth the brother, as the disciple of Christ saith, speaketh against the law, and judgeth the law. James 4.14 4, Who have chosen a virtuous life, and are practicing without remissness that will of God, which, as Scripture saith, is good and acceptable and perfect. Romans 12.2 These wronged them, and even though anyone afflict them, they think nothing of the matter. To be slow then unto anger is a virtue altogether excellent, and the fruit of that love which the wise Paul even declares to be the fulfilling of the law. Romans 13.10 Letter 58 of St. Cyril to Maximus, the deacon of Antioch. I see at a glance that the most pious bishop, John, himself has need of much charity, in order that he may win those who are rebellious. Often harsh collisions repel those who have been disgraced, and it is better to rescue those who were opponents by gentleness, rather than to hurt them with the spareness of precision. Just as if their bodies were ill, it would doubtless be necessary, of course, to stretch out a hand to them, so since their souls are in pain, there is a need of much charity, as if it were a medicine being furnished for them. Little by little, they will themselves come to a sincere disposition, and these are the services of help and power of administration. 1 Corinthians 12.28 which the blessed Paul named. Let not your reverence, therefore, be disturbed, 
and do not view with extreme precision the negotiations now being conducted, especially in the present crisis. We do not desire to cut, but to tie following the words of our Saviour. It is not the healthy, he says, who need a physician, but they who are sick. Luke 5.31 And if so, as he says again, I have not come to call the just, but sinners to repentance. Luke 5.32 Letter 61 of St. Cyril to John of Antioch shows his love for peace. To desire peace is a supreme and excellent good. And I say that those who wish to hold opinions pleasing to Christ should abide in this zeal without ceasing and with bravery. However, it is not proper for this reason to despise the virtue of goodness in Christ, but it is most injurious to be overawed, and another thing, to love peace indeed and the benefits that flow from it. But it is most injurious to bring forth not those things whereby peace is strengthened and becomes undisturbable, but rather those things which destroy and overturn it, and do not permit those matters to remain concerning which peace has been made. <laughs>